All right, fabulous. Let me uh, maximize it here real quick and we'll be ready to roll. So thanks everyone for being on with us today. Uh, just confirmation, everything, everybody's seeing the screen okay. It looks like that's going well and I see the questions coming in, so perfect. So today we're gonna talk very simply about how to use a ridiculously, ridiculously smart but simple ETF system consistently delivers a big time returns in all market conditions, lots of compounding without being chained to your computer. Of course, when we're talking about this today, this is for the express purpose of disclosing a proprietary investment selection and monitoring system, which is copyrighted material. And the, the, the fourth paragraph there is the most important. Past results of any trading or investment system are not necessarily indicative of future performance. So of course, what we're gonna be talking about today is uh, uh, what we're going to be talking about today is exactly how we trade this ETF tipping point stuff and how, how it applies on different uh, different ETFs. So we cover nine different sectors and the nine different sectors that we cover are shown here on the screen. Everything from the DIA to the SPY to the Qs, which you know most people are obviously very familiar with, down to some less known ETFs, things like the KBE, the OIH, the GLD, uh, which cover the, the financial and banking sector, the oil sector, the gold sector, uh, the semiconductors, was, which is SMH, IYR is real estate, and XLB is materials. And so we'll, we're going to teach you today exactly how we make these trades, why we use ETFs, uh, how we use double ETFs and options on ETFs to participate in this as well, and kind of how all this works. But basically, if we were to boil it all down, this is exactly what we're going to cover, this exact chart right here. So here's a recent chart just shows at that particular juncture in time, we were in nine different trades and we're uh, every single one of those trades was profitable. Of course, uh, you can see the different days column. Some of those day, trades were 156 days old. Some of those trades were only six days old. So mm -hmm. kind of gives you a range of what, of what we're talking about. So slow down, Kurt, what's an ETF and why should I care? Well, a basic ETF, is a fund that tracks indexes like in the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, or the Dow Jones. It's designed to exactly mimic that index without doing a lot of changing what's in that basket. So they're not trying to beat the market, they tr they're trying to be the market in that particular thing. Uh, there's no management fee because there's no active trading, it's not like a mutual fund, and the price fluctuates up and down just like the underlying. So if we were to look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, on a chart, uh, which is in my trading software is, you know, dollar sign DGI, DGI Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can see the ups and downs of, of, of the candles. And if we were to pull up the, the DIA, which is the Dow Jones Industrial ETF, you, you'll notice that if we flip back and forth, you can see that the candles are essentially identical. They're not exactly identical, but pretty close. Um, so the ETF trades exactly like the index. And that's what we're looking for. Why would we want that? Well, why ETFs? Well, ETFs allow you to have a massively diversified portfolio with the simplicity of trading a single stock. Because um, unlike mutual funds, uh, ETFs are open and you can, uh, uh, in, all during the day, you can trade as many times as you want, just like a stock. You can go short, you can go long, and uh, they have much more flexibility than uh, mutual funds, as we'll show. Now, over there's over 6,500 different ETFs currently, and that's through the end of August of last year. And now there's over 10 trillion dollars that are floating to ETFs. It's kind of an invention that's kind of take that's taken the financial world by storm in the last few years. It's just made it a simpler, more efficient way to trade almost any segment or sector of the economy. So why should you listen to me? Well, quite simply, I'm from a small dairy farming town, Preston, Idaho. If you ever saw the 2000 for moving Napoleon Dynamite. Yes, that's set in my hometown. Uh, I grew up on the farm here, you know, on the side of, of Mink Creek up in Mink Creek, Idaho, which is actually outside of Preston, Idaho. So you go to a small town, then you go to an even smaller, smaller town, <coughs> 16 miles away. But if you're anything like me, <coughs> excuse me, I have two main interests and a gazillion side ones. You know, I love to travel. This is where I live now in the Pacific Northwest, beautiful places like this. Um, with my kids out on the lake, uh, some of our, re but I also lo love to travel the world. I've been, been everywhere in the world, probably about 50 different countries. This is a erupting volcano in Guatemala, Tikal in Guatemala with the uh, immense heat there. It's about 95 degrees and 95% humidity. Uh, and Machu Picchu and uh, hiking in the Inca Trail into, into Peru or various pyramids or surfing or rappelling. And of course, my kids. So of course, the main emphasis of this is I've got two main interests. And the main interest, interest is travel and enjoying the, this world that we, that's been, that, that's just 
unbelievably complex and, and varied, but also, you know, spending time with my wife and my three kids. So my investing goals based on my, the two interests that I have are, are pretty simple. I want to way above market returns. I want lots of compounding and I want to do this in less than 15 minutes a week. So who else is with me? Because unlike a lot of people, I don't want to day trade or be chained to my desk. So show me the money. What's the results of trading an ETF system like this? Well, if we started back in late 2006, uh, so over 10 years now, and we put $10,000 into each of the nine different ETFs that we track, that $90,000 would have turned into 24.5 million with compounding, which is a 27,000% return or 273X on your capital. But what if you just took out all your profits and just banked your profits and continued to trade the same amount uh, with the, of the original investment? Well, that $90,000 still would have turned into nearly $600,000 with zero compounding. And that's still a 5.6 times X. So here's on a day chart exactly what, what kind of trades we're looking at. We show you exactly where to go short and where to go long on ETFs like the Dow Jones. You can see uh, go short is the red arrow on top, go long is the green arrow on the bottom. On the S&P 500, on the NASDAQ, on banking, you can see banking is a lot more volatile than the other major market indexes. And you can see that uh, we have a lot more trades. Most of these, most of these trades are about two to three weeks long, uh, depending on the sector. And here's my favorite sector of all time is oil. Uh, oil consistently cycles between uh, highs and lows. And unlike an equity, you know, equity could go to zero. Of course, an equity could go to infinity and uh, usually obviously trade somewhere in between those. But a commodity like oil or gold uh, is going to have a, a floor and it's going to have a ceiling. Um, and so you've got uh, many more trades in our oil sector and oil is one of my very favorites. Gold, another commodity sector. Uh, semiconductors, which is kind of a derivative of the tech sector, real estate, and materials, which is, you know, building and, and new construction and things of that nature. Well, just to show you kind of a little bit of the results, uh, you know, we, we currently post these for all our members. These are all the actual trades going back to 2006 with uh, each trade, the date, the trade price, the closing percentage, gain or loss, and then what happens with the compounding and the number of trades. And we keep this, of course, for every sing single different sector. This is the SPY and the Qs. And it just goes on and on. This is not obviously an overnight type of success sort of thing. This is, if you've ever traded before, you know that uh, trading involves work. It involves a lot of uh, patience and involves do, being disciplined to do exactly the right things at the right time. So you can see uh, on the oil trades are up 885% in that time period, gold 423%. And, you know, just here's, here's an example trade from the last year. Uh, just to put this perspective, if you look this up on the KB, which is the uh, banking and finance index, we were up 41% from 729, 2016 to 227, 2017. So just last year, you know, th these are the kind of trades that we're pulling out from, from kind of not uh, looking like an obvious low to not looking like an obvious high, we pulled out 41%. And of course, like we mentioned, oil is our most profitable sector. Here's the oil trades over the last couple of years. You can see uh, the black arrow on the bottom is when we bought, uh, black arrow on the top is when we sold, and we flip back between bullish and bearish. So how do we generate these tipping point signals? Of course, that's the $64,000 question. How do we do it? How do we do this? Well, let's start out by explaining what it's not. By definition, in my opinion, technical analysis is 50 years of traders arguing about stuff that works sometimes. Now, if we go even to, into Amazon and type in technical analysis, you're going to come up with 50,812 results of books on charting and technical analysis. Here's my controversial statement, moving averages suck. Uh, Larry Williams, now he's filled dozens of books with 60 or so different oscillators for trading, but shouldn't there just be one by now? The answer is that technical study by itself doesn't do it because here's the reason why. Everybody's looking at exactly the same data. Uh, we only have the same three basic elements and everyone is looking at exactly that same data. We have price, time, and volume. So a quick quiz for you. Of those three basic elements that every indicator is built on, price, time, and volume, which are the two that most people concentrate most of their efforts and energy on? 
out of those three, there's two of them that are more, more concentrated on. What are the two that are most concentrated on? Go ahead and type that into the, the questions box. I'll give you a quick 10, 10 or 15 seconds there. All right, we're having some of the answers come in. Yep, you're entirely correct. Of those three, price and time are the ones that most people concentrate on. So of course, if most people concentrate on price and time, that's going to appear in more and more indicators. Of course, the trouble with indicators is that they now appear for free in every charting platform under the sun. When I started trading over 20 years ago, uh, you had to pay upwards of you know 300 bucks a month to a company like Realtake or somebody like that uh, to get the same indicators that are now be that are now available for free. So everybody's concentrating on price and time. So let's talk about volume. What can we get about volume? Well. Everyone scrambles to put their name on a proprietary indicator and manipulate those results in just a slightly different fashion. And the basic failure of all of those, you know, whether you're talking about standard deviations or Bollinger Bands or MACD or stochastics or, or triple smooth exponentials or any of those, is that they all use moving averages as the baseline. And so even a newbie to trading knows that moving averages are a big gotcha. If they're too short, you get whipsawed. If they're too long, you get left in the dust, m missing those big market terms. So if we go to Investopedia and just type in tech, technical indicators, you'll, you'll look at, at all these indicators. I mean, these, these are hundreds and hundreds of indicators, everything from fake out, false signal, Gartley pattern, moving money flow, cue stick, stochastics. Um, you know, all of these, well, not all of these, but most of these are based on, on price and time. So that, that's, that's the problem with, with all of these indicators. If, if even newbies know that, that moving averages have this gotcha, What's the problem with the rest of us more experienced traders continue to rely on something that, that uses moving averages? Well, moving averages do work in trending markets, of course. But the problem is the markets are flat about 40% of the time. So for the last 15 years, I have avoided moving averages like the plague just for that reason. Sure, I still look at stochastics, my own secret sauce of 533, but only when I'm watching for a trend change and I want confirmation. I don't even use candlesticks, and I studied candlesticks pretty intently for over a year. Uh, we want to find something that is not being monitored by the other people, not being monitored and, and packaged into, into free indicators because in trading, we don't want to run with the pack because the pack is invariably wrong. So which gets us down to what do we use and why the system is different than any other? Well, first off, we start with optionable stocks, options, and ETFs and indexes. And I advise you to do the same. Uh, I would never advise someone to trade something that doesn't have options on it. The reason is pretty simple. Uh, there's much more interest in things that have options on them. That's why they have options on them. Uh, they have more investor interest, it equates to a better training vehicle, generally prices are more stable and display much more investor confidence. The next thing is we look for ETFs by their components, which now an ETF is just a basket of stocks and these baskets do have some basic problems. If you ever, ever researched the history of the Dow Jones Industrial Average and their magic divisor number or how that all works, you know what I'm talking about. Because when we're when we're uh, adding these these separate baskets of stocks together to create the ETF, you could choose one of three ways to count uh, to count each of them, right? You could count it as price weighted, as in the price of the underlying stock is determines its weight in the index. You could do it a market cap weighted, where the market capitalization or value of a company affects its value in the index, or you could do equally weighted. So in my opinion, the only sensible way to treat these is equally weighted. So we're trying to look for a sector move, which means an incremental move spread out and across an entire uh, uh, basket of stocks. So any other type of weighting disguises this. So if we're looking at the S&P 500, every stock has a one 500th weighting, whether it's priced at $4 or $400. Now, this, this allows us to get a more accurate view of exactly what's going on in the entire sector. Now, and here's the, here's the real key. In, 1963, Joe Granville came out with a book called New Key to Stock Market Profits. And this was a revolutionary book that introduced his new concept back then, was brand new back then. He invented it in 1963 called On Balance Volume. So On Balance Volume in its, in its core is a very simple concept. On Balance Volume is very simply the concept that volume precedes price. A change in volume is going to precede a change in price. And this is what everything that we do in the ETF tipping point is built on. However, we do not use simple 1963 on balance volume. And we're going to explain what on balance volume is and then, and then show you how we differ. Okay. So volume precedes price. That means any major change in price is going to be preceded by a change in volume, both bullish and bearish. And like we talked about, 
OBV, which is the indicator that Joe Granville came up with in 1963, is pretty simple. It just subtracts, uh, it's a simple indicator that adds a period's volume when it closes up and subtracts the period's volume when it closes down. So then the cumulative total of the volume additions of, of subtractions over a number of days forms what's called the OBV line. And the OBV can be compared with the price chart of the underlying security to look for divergences or confirmation. So it's pretty simple. Uh, if the today's closing price is greater than yesterday's closing price, then the new OBV would be yesterday's OBV plus today's volume. If today's closing price is less than yesterday's closing price, the new OBV is yesterday's OBV minus today's volume. And if it's equal, of course, it just cancels out. However, now remember, here's the trick. When was OBV invented? When did the Joe Granville's book come out? Yes, 1963. Can you think of any, I don't know, inventions, uh, growth, uh, advances that have been made in computing power since 1963? Well, there's, there's been a few, right? <laughs> right? You look on this chart, and this shows in 1963, uh, computers were still using transistors, and the, you know, the, the cutting-edge computer at the time was the IBM 1620, or perhaps the IBM 1130. This is way, way, way before uh, personal computers or anything of the sort, even before the Apple IIs or anything like that. Apple IIs weren't, wasn't even until the late 70s, right? So this is, this is way before any kind of personal computing power at all. And, you know, think and contrast that to where we're at today. So, of course, if there's been this huge, massive advance in computing power, an OBV... As a, as a concept of as, as an idea in 1963 worked at its basic level, performing the calculation just once per day. Now, what would happen if you actually used computing power to bring that up to, to this, this century? Well, what we do is we created what we call the ETF tipping point. And what we do using computing and server power is we currently look at every single stock individually that makes up the entire ETF uh, basket. So that means for the S&P 500, we keep a run, running total throughout the day as to whether there's more buying than selling going on on every single trade, tick by tick. So quick question, how would we know whether there's more buying or selling pressure on every single trade, tick by tick? Anybody have any idea how, we'd, how we would do that? It's kind of a trick question. We are gonna explain it, of course, but there is a way right there in the order data to know whether there's more buying pressure or more selling pressure on every single trade, tick by tick. So what we do is, you know, of course, we monitor all the S&P 500 companies, which is everything from uh, Bell, Berkshire Hathaway, Carnival, Cisco, and all the way down the entire list. We have servers running that are monitoring the stock transactions of each of these companies throughout every single day that the market's open. It's a big list, 500 companies. Every single transaction is monitored and every single transaction is looking for whether there's more buying pressure or more selling pressure. Now, remember what's included in a trade when uh, a buying or selling transaction happens. Well, of course, there's the closing price, but also at that time, you're going to know if you capture the data, you're going to know what the bid price was and what the ask price was. So what we do is we evaluate the bid price and ask price for the trade and if the sale went off closer to the ask price then the sellers were willing to hold out for a higher price and buyers were willing to pay a bit extra to ensure they got those shares. On the flip side, if the sale went off at the bid price, then it was the sellers who were willing to move their prices down toward the buyers who were then in control, able to, able to force the hand of the sellers to reduce the price. So that's all we're doing is we're monitoring the difference between the trade price at what it was executed between the bid ask spread. Obviously a bid is the price a seller is willing to pay for a stock an ask price is the will, price the seller is willing to sell their shares at. And the difference in the middle is the bid-ask spread. So typically, uh, the bid-ask spread, on, it widens or, or narrows depending on the market that you lean with. Most of the time, in these individual ETFs, the, the, the bid-ask spread is a matter of, of one cent or two cents. If you get into some of the more... Uh, less, you know, some of the less, more exotic ETFs, of course, that bid-ask spread is going to widen. But what we're doing is we're monitoring every single transaction to see whether the trade went off closer to the bid price or closer to the ask price. So then this establishes either a positive or negative tick volume, which then, like Granville's original idea, allows us to set up with a great confidence and more pr precise measure of where the real power is, with the buyers or the sellers. At the end of the day, we know out of 500 stocks in S&P 500, how many are on positive footing, 
greater than 50% with more real accumulation than how many are on a negative stance. Using this ETF tipping point line, uh, we end up with a high confidence level of, of what's going to happen. Notice that this is all done without the use of moving average or any commonly available technical indicator. Seeing as how we've been collecting this information over the prior 13 trading days, we also know where each company within the ETF sits in terms of its positive or negative trend. When it switches from positive to negative balance, more than 50% on a negative trend, we then have a sell signal, right? And vice versa. So let's walk through the whole process. Now, at this point, I am going to assume that you decided to forgo the development of your own tick by tick collection platform and you're going to use our signals, or at least the, the concept behind our signals. If not, feel free. Um, this took us a couple years to get it right, ongoing data costs of over a thousand bucks a month and well over 95,000. Actually, I should update that slide. It's currently over 165,000 in programming fees because that's quite simply what we're doing. We're monitoring the data feeds, the transaction data of 500 stocks, just in the S&P 500 and monitoring whether there is more buying or selling pressure by evaluating whether the trade went up closer to the bid price or closer to the ask price. And we do that across every ETF that we cover, and that's nine different ETFs. Of course, S&P 500 has 500, Dow has 30. Uh, some of the others have much less numbers, but uh, you can see we're talking about thousands of data points, thousands of transactions, uh, all hand handled by our servers. Uh, and actually, in a pretty economical fashion, you know, I, I looking back on it, I can see how I could have ended up spending millions on this project to get a fraction of what I'm getting. But I got really lucky early on. I've been in programming and software development. So uh, I've had a great team of developers the entire time. And so, yeah, we're only looking at $150,000, $170,000 in spend so far. And it goes up every month because of the, of the data cost, of course. So then we send those signals out every Friday after 12.30 p.m. Pacific or 3.30 p.m. Eastern. You can trade the next day. The market opens Monday if you can't see that trade or make it during that day. Of course, that's the very simplest way of trading is buying or selling the underlying ETFs. However, you could buy or short the single ETF, of course, like we mentioned, or you could buy the two times ETF or the two times inverse ETF. Yes, there in, in, exists inverse ETFs or uh, ETFs to go the opposite, opposite direction on a two times basis for every single one of the sectors that we cover. Now, you could also, if you want to get really crazy, uh, is you could buy or buy calls or puts on the one times ETF or buy calls or puts on the two times ETF. Now, I'm an options guy myself. I like I like using options. Uh, now, I'm not uh, a crazy options speculator. I'm, I, I'm using options more on the, uh, the hedging side of things. And so we're not talking about, you know, one in 200 chance options deep out of the money options that uh, have no chance of ever, you know, you're just blowing your money. We're talking about buying options that uh, our function as a proxy of the ETF. So here's an example from, from a recent day. And you can see just starting at the very top shows exactly what the trading direction was on the DIA, for example, on that day. We were bullish on the DIA. We had entered that signal all the way back on 6-5-2017. It was 156 days in length. And we're currently up 19.2% on the, on the trade using the single ETF. That's just buying the DIA. It's gone up 19.2%. So what if we wanted to get a little bit more crazy, get a little bit more aggressive. We could have also bought the two times ETF, the two times bullish ETF. And we give you that complete list here, right? So if you're talking about the DIA, it would be the pair would be the DDM for bullish and the DXD for bearish. And so we would have bought the DDM. Now, would we be up two times this 19.2%? Not exactly. Uh, if you're familiar with the way that two times ETFs works, and well, there's actually even three times and four times ETFs, but uh, or 3x or 4x, however you want to say it. Uh, the problem is a single ETF has a, a very simple job, right? You give us some money, we invest it in these companies on, on, in this proportion, right? That's it. They make no decisions, nothing subjective, right? It doesn't market whether, matter where the market's going up or down, they just buy the same basket. Now, a two times ETF is a little bit different animal, right? Because if the market goes up 100 points, a two times ETF is supposed to go up 200 points in this individual sector. So how are they going to do that? Well, they have to use something with leverage. They have to use uh, something that's derivative, right? Futures or options or um, any, any of those sorts of things, right? And so sometimes that works out for them and sometimes they, they buy the correct instruments and sometimes not. So a two times ETF 
most likely will be above this 19.2% gain, but it won't be exactly two times, you know, exactly double it. And especially as we go longer and longer time periods, uh, the two times ETFs and three times ETF work much better for shorter holding periods. So, you know, if we're talking something that's a trade 51 days in length, that's fine. Uh, six days in length is very fine. Once we get up to 150 days in length, obviously the, the performance is going to degrade a little bit. So, but what if we wanted to buy an option uh, on this position? Well, we include an exact option that we would recommend that you buy at this point that time we we uh, would have recommended the DIA and here's how you interpret the option symbols it's actually very easy it's not as complicated as most people make it out to be but the 18 stands for the year so that means it expires in 2018 the 0316 stands for the month and day in 2018 so it's just the the month and day and year is reversed slightly than the normal American structure of doing it but uh, this stands for expires on March 16th of 2018. The next symbol is either going to be a C or P for a call or a put. And then the strike price, 240. So in this case, on 6-5-2017, we advise you to buy the 240 call uh, with the March expiration. Okay. And the same thing on the two times ETF. Okay. So then you just hold those positions until you receive a, a signal to reverse or rarely go to cash and re-enter the trade the next week. An ETF is either bullish or bearish in the system. We try to be in the market at all times. If you're only comfortable playing to the upside, then only trade when bullish and go to cash for that ETF when they're bearish. So every Friday around 12.30 p.m. Pacific, we send out an email alert as to the status where we believe the signals will be at the end of the trading day. This is by posting on our membership site and of course by email. Then here's the real key. Then we do it again a couple hundred more times. We've done this over 624 times in the past 10 years for an average of five excuse me, 5.2 trades a month. Now, 5.2 trades a month isn't all that exciting. And none of these trades individually by themselves are the type of things that you, you know, you'd brag to people about at cocktail parties, right? However, the cumulative effect is massive, right? If we start with $10,000 in each sector and apply the compounding, uh, that's where it gets really, really crazy because the system has an extremely high win rate. Uh, in the oil sector, actually, we're over a 95% win rate, and most of the other sectors were in an 80 to 85% win rate. So, yeah, we, we have losses just like anybody else, um, but the cumulative effect of those over time is pretty massive. Okay, so just to show you, uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier, just, you know, the, the daily price fluctuations of, say, the single ETFs versus the double ETFs. This is just something I set up on, set up on my iPhone. Now, a lot of people use those sorts of things, simple apps to track uh, their portfolios. So this is on one particular day. It showed the DIA was up 1.53%, right, which is the underlying ETF. Uh, the single ETF, the double ETF, the DDM on this particular day was up 2.96%. So you can see it's not exactly double, but pretty dang close. The DXD, which is the bearish two times ETF was down 2.92%. And you can see that play out across all these ETFs. SPY is the, is the regular plain Jane single ETF. SSO is the bullish 2X. SDS is the bearish 2X. You can see how those results work out. So of course, the usual legal stuff our attorneys make us say, the financial markets are risky. Uh, investing is risky. Past performance does not guarantee future performance. The foregoing is prepared solely for informational purposes and educational purpose, not solicitation or offer to buy, sell any security. Okay. So who might be interested? We're going to go through this very quickly because I know we have, we're a little bit behind on time. And uh, basically at this point, you're going to know whether you're interested or not. You know, we're not, uh, we're not doing uh, something that requires you to be chained to your desk. What we are doing is giving you signals like this on the Dow Jones. Uh, if you would be comfortable taking those positions, you know, those are exactly the kind of positions that we offer. Uh, on the Dow, we turned $10,000 from 2000, 2006 to now into over $425,000 with compounding, right? These are all, uh, you know, real trades that, that were issued on time. Uh, we're not saying we took all these trades in real time, but they, they were issued in real time to our members going all the way back to 2006. S&P 500 could have turned $10,000 into over 460. Uh, NASDAQ could have turned $10,000 into over a million. Banking could have turned $10,000 into about 3.5 million. Oil, and of course, this is the one I mentioned is my favorite, could have turned $10,000 into 12 million. 
with compounding. That's the power of having an extremely high win rate and a high number of trades. Uh, gold could have turned $10,000 into nearly 500,000. Semiconductors, 10,000 into nearly uh, 3.5 million. Real estate, 10,000 into uh, over a million. And look at the equity curves. Obviously, you know they're not straight up or anything like that, but they're very reasonable. We do have uh, slight drawdowns, of course, but uh, very reasonable equity curves. And the materials, uh, 10,000 into nearly 1.8 million. So um, we also publish you know, on the website showing you uh, exactly how it looks in terms of with compounding, without compounding. This is showing with compounding uh, exactly where we're out from 2000, start of 2016 until now. So of course on oil, we're up more than that now, but shows we're up to that point, 62.9%, up 35% on gold. Um, you know, and we're not gonna win at all times. Obviously 2017 was a very weird market and everything continued to, 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 to kind of trickle up, I get not trickle up, but uh, uh, rise incrementally over time with no real reason. And so, you know, we uh, this system actually performs the best in trending markets. So no severely trending bullish or bearish markets, but it, it actually kicks butt in bearish markets. So we've got our fingers crossed. I know nobody else does, but we've got our fingers crossed for another bearish market so we can have another 2008 like we had, which was our highest performing year in the system. Where everybody else lost their shorts, we were up two, three hundred percent, depending on what you traded in the system. So, put it simply, here's my offer to coach 25 of you. We do have two program options. The first one is $997 for six months access. That's just our starter program. Try it out, get going with the signals, apply them to your own account, or $2,997 for three years access, which is a 50% discount. If you go with the three years access right up front, we do give you some additional cool, very cool bonuses. As a thank you, we give you our uh, trading as a business advanced options course that we held here in Spokane, Washington. Uh, three day workshop, we get you that. Uh, on DVD, we sold that for $5,000. We get you our weekly option system, which we sell every day for $500. And we get you some of our more advanced stuff that we haven't even released to the public yet that will sell for $5,000. We'll give you complimentary beta access to that as part of that three years access. I hate overhead. I could get some fancy marketing, hire some full-time sales guys, but you know that's just not me. This is here in my office in Spokane Valley. Uh, we're a real company, been around for you know 20 years, uh, you know, this is back to the beginning of the internet actually. Uh, but this is us. If you're ever in, in the neighborhood, Spokane is on the east side of eastern Washington, just west of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. But instead of dealing with big wigs, hedge fund managers, I'd rather enjoy my free time and deal with just a few customers. We normally would go through some of our testimonials, some of our excited, happy customers, because obviously we've been doing this. Well, we've been publishing the signals over 10 years. We've been selling the signals uh, in this current format for over eight years. Uh, so we've got tons of happy customers. Dean, uh, we're going to skip through some of those, but uh, we're willing to put my money where my mouth is on this. I'm going to take the majority of the risk, giving you an ironclad two-part performance guarantee. It's pretty simple. Part one, go through the entire training, start trading live or in demo mode. And if you don't love it, get a complete refund anytime within 90 days of ordering. Simply submit your trading log and we'll issue a prompt refund. That's all we ask. Just take the just take the trades as they come up, either in demo or live mode. If you're not happy with the results, submit your trade log. We'll give you a full refund. Part number two: learn the system, use it for a full six months, executing all the trades as they come up. If you don't at least make the system investment back in profit, I'll personally work with you for free until you do. So either way, you love it, make good money with it, or you hate it, you get your money back. Um, so there is some bonuses for the first 25 signups. Uh, number one, we'll make a donation in your name to Kiva.org. It's an organization that helps entrepreneurs in third world countries. And we do have a two-day live workshop in Spokane, Washington, coming up in the fall of 2018. You get some tickets to that uh, for free. So here's how you order to claim one of the 25 spots. You can either call our secure voicemail line at 509-720-7867, leave a detailed message along with your full name and address, phone, email, credit card, number with expiration, along with which choice of the two packages you'd like, and we'll return your call ASAP to confirm and process your order. Or you can order order online by going to etftippingpoint.com slash six month or etftippingpoint.com slash three year. So just to answer a few just last remaining questions before we wrap up, I'm just skipping forward here, I'm just skipping our testimonials and our proof pages. We've kind of done enough of that. Uh, here's our FAQ, and this is the time to ask questions if you have them. Go ahead and throw them in that questions box. 
our time is about to expire, but uh, we've got a couple minutes. Um, so what about Brexit, the flash crash of 2010, or recession of 2008? What's the system's win rate, drawdown, and profit per month? Quite simply, we can go through those. Um, we, we don't know if it's coincidence. We don't, don't, know, don't know if it's an underlying thing in the market. But in every single major market correction, for example, 2008, here's where we're at in 2008 on the SPY. We made 56% from June of 2008 to December of 2008. The flash crash, which was May 6, 2010, uh, we were we were bearish at that day anyway. So not like the not like anything really happened on that, but we were up 11% on that trade. Brexit, which happened June 23rd, 2016, we were also short at that time. Uh, so FAQ, what kind of experience do I need? Answer: You really just need a desire to learn, basic trading account and software, and commitment to make the trades. That's it. Can I trade in an IRA or 401k account? Absolutely. We re we recommend that, of course. Uh, you can trade an IRA or 401k account. Just make sure that uh, if it's a if it's a retirement account, you can't trade short on ETFs. You're going to have to trade the double ETFs or use an inverse. Uh, to you, you can only trade long on those. How much startup capital? We recommend at least $500 per sector or $4,500 to trade all nine. With less capital than that, you can just trade fewer sectors to build up the account. And of course, the big question right here. What is the question? Well, that's the sandy beach. So why aren't you retired to a tropical island somewhere? Why are you selling the system to us? Well, quite simply, selling the system has no impact on the size of the market that we're dealing with. We're dealing with the, the biggest ETFs in the world. Even with a thousand students and all, if they all had $100,000 and just invested in the SPY, that's only 470,000 shares roughly, uh, which would be one half of 1% of the total shares traded in a day on the SPY. And we're obviously nowhere even close to that. So. It's just a, a, a trickle in the bucket compared to uh, the total volume of this market. And the second answer is, is there any faster way for me to grow my own trading account than to make frequent deposits to further my compounding? Of course not. From one day to the, the next, for example, if I, if I sold 25 units today at $997, that'd be nearly $25,000 in additional capital that I could add to my own accounts. Why wouldn't I do that? So how many versions of the system have gone through? And then we'll wrap up. I think we're right at the, the bottom of the hour. Uh, we're on version four. On version three and prior, which we refer to as legacy, we average about 3.41% with live trades delivered in real time. Version four uh, looks to be leaps and bounds above the prior version, specifically in win rate, and those results are marked as back tested in our results. So that's about it. That's all I have. Um, we had some of those in, in informational slides and testimonials, but we we're not going to have enough time to cover those. So, of course, if you want to order, go ahead and call 509-720-7867 or go online etftippingpoint.com slash six month or etftippingpoint.com slash three year. So thank traders talk, thanks, Traders Talk Live. It's uh, back over to you. Thanks for having me on.